uh, let's get the timer here. All right, so hi, this is Andy Fan, and uh, this is the pre-lab portion of the uh, stats POC workshop. Um, oh, here we go on the web. Uh, what we're going to briefly talk about today is not all the bullet points here, but I encourage you to go on web, go on the web, and check out all the wiki pages because um, it's important to learn about these terms because they will try, they'll help you understand. Uh, rock curves, specificity, and sensitivity. Okay, but today we're going to briefly talk about um, the difference between sample means versus population means. Sample means is a little bit more difficult because uh, it's, n is not infinity. Um, something about p-values, but not a lot. But we're going to talk, mostly talk about false positive and false negatives, which is involved in specificity and sensitivity, and a little bit about the power of a test. So this is a point of care conference and. Why not talk about the quintessential point of care device, ladder flow strip, aka pregnancy test. Um, here we have two strips, and sort of what everybody wants to look for are two lines. Right? The, the first line on the left is uh, the control line, where regardless of whether or not you're pregnant, uh, it should be red. Okay? That means the assay is working properly to begin with. Now, if you were pregnant, uh, you will have a red line, obviously, on the experimental line versus when you're not pregnant, it should be white. Now, there's a pretty good delineation between the white versus red here, and that's, that's a good effective size. And, and you should have that in your device, right? You can tell between A versus B. Um, but what I'm going to talk about today is what if you bought a pregnancy test that was not very good off of a random drugstore? So that, let's talk about that right now. So here you see two strips. Uh, that you bought, let's say. And um, what we're going to do is on the, on the lower left-hand corner, we have a little uh, chart here. Let's say we add uh, to both strips liquids that do not activate the experimental line. So it's a minus pregnancy control liquids. Okay? And the first kind of liquid that we're going to add to strip A on the left is, let's say, water, sham liquid. Okay? And we're going to add some chemicals to that liquid solution so that the control line is red but it does not activate the experimental line. Awesome. Uh, negative control, great. But what if we test it on a real woman? So that if you test on a real woman, be, you might have a problem. So she pees on it, and this particular woman, you know biologically she's not pregnant okay, to begin with, a priori. And what happens is, oh my gosh, you see this pink spot. You're like, ah, that sucks. Why? This background noise in your negative control will basically create errors in your decision-making process. How? Okay, let's say we take two more strips from two other women, okay? Strip number one on the left, here, the density of the pink spot is pretty much the same as, as the pink spot of our negative control. All right, great. She most probably, most probably uh, came from a non-pregnant woman, okay? And we're gonna classify it as not pregnant. Now, what about the second strip? The second strip is 5% more dense in terms of pinkish color than the first strip. Now, here, here presents a problem, right? She might be positive for pregnancy, but most likely you're gonna, you're gonna look at this by eye and you're gonna classify as a negative, right? Because it looks pretty light to me, right? In terms of strip number two versus strip number B, right? So. She, she may be positive, but you classified it incorrectly, maybe, as a negative. So this, this could be a, what, a false negative, okay? Now, strips three and four, uh, those women, when they pee on it, it's really red. And you might ask, why, why, why are they more pregnant? You can't get more pregnant, right? I mean, you're pregnant or you're not pregnant. Well, it, it, it could be more red because maybe they did it correctly. They follow instructions. Or maybe they've been pregnant for a longer duration so that their uh, protein levels in your urine are higher, so you get a much darker uh, line. But these are probably came from a population of pregnant women. Right? They're probably pregnant, and we would classify them as pregnant. Okay. Now, here, here comes the deal. Right? There, there's a, there could be a math, in math we call it a pathological example, where, where strip number five, a woman pees on it, and the control line is not as dark as the others. So now, now we, it begs the question, what do we do with this guy, right? If 
we're probably going to classify this as positive, but we could be wrong, right? She could m most definitely come from a negative population, right? So this could probably be what? A false positive, right? So, so that, that was sort of a pictorial view of false positive versus false negative, you know, very basic scenarios. But, you know, and if I were a CEO that owns the, this company that sells these strips, I would like to know some statistics, right? So what, what would I do? I, I, would, I would tell, I would get 100 women, random, I don't know if they're pregnant or not, and um, they would pee on one, 100 strips, you know, one each, so 100 total. And since I'm the CEO and, and I, I'm also the worker, I'm a one-man one man crew here, I have to ascertain whether or not each of these strips are, are negative, for pregnancy or positive for pregnancy, right? By eye, so sub subjective. I don't have a digital camera that reads densitometry, right? So, so let's say that just just for kicks, I, I have ankles 50 that I thought that was negative, okay? And ankles 50 that I thought was positive just by looking at it by eye, okay? Now, I would like to get some graphs and statistics and see, you know, what. what have I made the right choices even? So how, how would I even go about doing this? Well, what I would do is first, you know, plot y-axis as the frequency of samples or events. We have two groups, okay? Um, it could be the number of samples if it's not normalized versus the x-axis, which is the color intensity. And remember, we have two groups, and I said, I, I, I thought, by eye, but 50 of them were negative and 50 of them were positive. So there's probably an average density of light pink on the negative, which could be represented by the uh, left pink strip right here. And the average intensity, we'll call that X bar, not bar means average, versus the, the positive 50 women that I think they're positive by I. And let's say the average intensity was like that, a little bit more pink, and we'll call that X one bar. So if I try to plot this as a histogram, for the negative sample on the left, I will probably get a distribution of, of light pink, I guess, to white, and it might be a bell curve, okay? And the center line here might represent the, uh, the sample mean. So just to foreshadow, X naught bar and X one bar are called sample means. They are different from the population means. Why? Sample means are taken from 50 people or 100 people, right? Population means means if I had tested these strips from all women in the world, three billion. Okay, these numbers are going to be different. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. All right? But anyway, let's get back to the story. The story is, let's say if we have a, if we did the whole histogram thing again with a pop, with a positive sample uh, population that I thought was positive anyway, you will have another bell curve, another gradation of more pink. Um, uh, I don't want to say devices, but yeah, strips. Okay. So now it begs the question, right? The strip that on on the right on the top okay i told you that this we pro we most likely would classify this as a negative but it could very well be from a positive population right positive woman uh pregnancy woman why she may have peed on a strip the wrong way you know she maybe maybe she didn't follow directions i don't know right or maybe there's antibody errors uh distribution errors on the strip we don't know so she could come from positive population, but we're gonna we're probably gonna classify as a negative. So this could be a false negative classification, right? And f and oops and oops and false negative populations are basically denoted by the yellow triangles. Okay. Um, the false positive ones are twofold. One it could be that the strip on the lower left right here, remember, it, we're probably going to classify this as positive, but you know, it could came from a negative patient, for real. So this would be a false positive, and it's denoted by the blue triangle, okay? And another kind of false positive would be what? This uh, pathological example, right? The control line is not as bright as before, so which means what? We probably would classify this as positive, but it may very well come from a true negative population, right? So this could be a false positive classification also, and that would that would be in the in the blue in the blue region in the uh, curves. 
So this is a more of a this slide is more of a quality distri distribution. Uh, sorry, uh, description of rather uh, relating false positives and false negatives to graphs, the two bell curves that you see a lot in statistics books, right? So are there, you know, graphs are great, but are there good n hard numerical analysis that you can do? Uh, to ascertain what's false positive and what's false negative. And you could sort of tell, but you want to use probability, right? Excuse me, let's get the uh, timer here. Uh, you want to use probability, so to figure out classifications, right? Whether you made a cla right, right classification or not. What's the probability of making an error? And this is basically hypothesis testing. So when you see statistics books on hypothesis testing, they always give you two bell curves, okay? And let's say on the left, again, is the negative population, not pregnant, versus the right, right bell curve, which is positive, right, pregnant. Now, I'm going to make a disclaimer right now saying that these two bell curves that you see are if I were to CEO and if I tested, let's say, 3 billion people, all the possible women in the world, okay? And I would get a distribution of, like this, and I would get a a mean color density, not so pink, uh, not so pink, almost white, where the average color density is, let's say, mu naught, okay, and versus what the positive population that I classify with a, and it has a density that's more pink, and the average density was mu one. These are called population means, and population means are usually not obtainable. Why? Because you got to test all possibilities, all women in the world, right? But let's say if we did. If we did, we, again, well, I'm, I'm classifying these by I, right, in, in, in my office, so I may have made a lot of errors in classification, right? So that those are errors associated with uh, the orange triangles and the blue triangles. And again, the blue triangles are false positives, which means what? They, they were classified positive, but they probably came from a true negative population, right? So again, they probably came from the left bell curve, but I wrongly classify them as a positive, right? They protrudes into the uh, into the positive bell curve on the right versus a false negative, which is I classified as a negative, but I probably made a wrong choice because it most likely came from a positive population. It came from the left bell curve, but I made the wrong decision and I classify as a negative, so the false negative. Right. The difference between uh, pregnant versus not pregnant, or red, mu1, versus mu0, which is kind of not red, almost white, the greater the differentiate between white and red is, is what we call effect size. Right? Effect size is basically something that's inherent to your assay. Um, you can't change effect, si effect size by you know, interviewing more people and having people more pee more. Why? Why? Um, having more people p basically it shrinks the bell curves it doesn't it doesn't shrink the the distance between the bell curves this is one thing that um if you read statistics sorry i'm looking at the clock here you're reading statistics um you should be aware of the effect size right um also i told you that our, ex our existing example we I took a hundred women and I divide and then I ascertained that okay, fifty of them are negative, fifty of them are positive, right? And the average sample dens mean density, okay, is x naught bar for the negative population, not pregnant, which is white, almost white, not pink, versus x bar one, which is what I thought is positive, pregnant, and is more pink. These are what's called again sample means. Why, and why they're called sample? They're different because I, I only took 100 people, right? If I took a lot more people, like a million people, then these sample means, or the, the intensity of, of the negative population, which probably is not so pink, um, right, almost white, will approach the population means. So X bar not will approach mu's, and uh, X one bar will approach mu one. So Small population versus large population sampling. This is another key point that um, you should be aware of when you read statistics books. Right. Right. 
And the ancillary thing is what's the delineation curve right here? The, this line has this formula. And basically, there's two parts. One is called a standard error to mean. And it's a, basically a measure of how close you are, um, how close you are uh, from x naught to mu naught versus x1 to mu1. And it, it really depends on how many people you test and the variance of the population that you test. Versus the other term, which is called t-critical, and this is a t means student t-test. So this is if you had, if you say I want 95% confidence level or p is 0.05, you look at a student t-test table and you look for a some kind of threshold. Okay, and this number usually depends on n and n to alpha. Okay. There's another kind, that was a one-tail test, there's another kind that's called two-tail test, and the graphs look exactly the same, except that, um, so this particular graph, the reason why I have only have one arrow for alpha equals 0 0.5 um, is because, uh, actually, 0 0.5 is actually the sum of the two, uh, two, two blue triangles, okay? Versus beta, uh, which is the red triangle, is only with that one triangle okay, on the left. So again, uh, be again, beta from the previous graph is associated with uh, power or specificity. Beta is one minus power or one minus sensitivity. And alpha, again, is from the previous, uh, sorry. Again, beta is one minus power and alpha is known as the p-value for one tail versus two tails, okay. So some sources of uncertainty that we see from these exercises are what? Uh, user or factory defects. <laughs> user meaning somebody didn't pee on the strip correctly, so that's why it's not red. Or factory defect, let's say the antibody was not even present on the strip, so that's why the negative result. Or if you if somebody peed on the strip and the antibody got washed off. All right, that's another defect. Versus biological. Right? Biological defects are I don't want to say defects, biological effects. <laughs> we're, we're, uh, there's temporal effects, right? If you're pregnant for a longer period of time, uh, it, your strip might get darker, okay? Just because your hormone levels are much more concentrated in urine. Versus some inherent problem, there might be inherent problems with your test, right? Your, maybe the antibodies that you used to construct your te uh, glider strip is not very specific, right? Maybe you should have killed another donkey or t killed another rabbit to make sure you get better antibodies. I don't know. Right? These, are, these are biological problems, but they're more of an acid-related problem as opposed to true biological problems. So to wrap it up, um, I invite you to read, uh, go to the, on the web and check out the Khan Academy lectures on, on uh, hypothesis testing, number one. Uh, it's very good. It's another video, but it's more math than what I just talked about. Okay. Once you get used to that, then go on the U of Alabama website. Uh, more math, um, pretty good explanations. Once you get used to looking at confidence intervals in um, alphas and betas, then go to the Wiki website and check out specificity and sensitivity. It's actually a really, really good page. And uh, once you get used to that, then you can, you can go forward and check out what's to come in the in-class lectures, which is uh, rock curves. So Rock Curves, you could check out the wiki page. It's also very good. But I also invite you to check out these other two links. So uh, thank you for your attention. I'll see you in the real lectures.